What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Hive. Today we are counting down our list of top 10 uncomfortable scandals that surround the Borgias. Do you think people will like this list, Rachel? I certainly hope so, because today we are talking about the spiciest papal family in Vatican history. I'm your host, Taylor McWater. And I'm your host, Rachel Fisher. Let's count it down, bees! Kicking off the list at number 10, Election Day. Known as the most corrupt pope in the history of the Catholic Church, Rodrigo Borgia, even before he became the big talk of the town, he bribed his way to get there. Yeah, shocker. There were Spanish-speaking nobles who rose to their power all over the Italian peninsula during the Renaissance. And it certainly helped when Rodrigo's uncle, a Alfonso de Borgia became Pope Callistus III come 1455. They say it's all about who you know, and that was the case for these relatives. He was the first ever pope in history to acknowledge his children, which, like many things on this list, was super controversial at the time. But it only gets better. Number nine, lions, tigers, mistresses, and children. So as far as I learned in church, priests, especially the pope, weren't allowed to have children because there was this whole like chastity thing, I don't know. However, back in the Borgia's time, it was actually quite common for popes to have mistresses and father children. However, it wasn't acknowledged, and for the most part, it was hidden. Pope Alexander made the bold choice of not only acknowledging his children, but spoiling them. The same for his mistresses. Everyone knew! He fathered four children with a Roman noblewoman named Venosa Catane, Joffrey, Juan, and most famously, Cesare and Lucrezia Borgia. He did everything he could to advance their careers, marrying them off to rich relations, and even made Cesare head of the military. Their complicated careers didn't stray far from the limelight, adding even more to their illustrious careers of the Borgias. Number 8. Familiar Face the face of Jesus Christ has appeared in the most bizarre places. Most of the time, it's toast. I don't know why, it's always a toast. No idea why, but European depictions of Jesus Christ, believe it or not, are based off Cesare Borgia's face. Imagine somebody using your face for the Lord's. It's kind of cool. Also, is this okay? Are people mad? What happened here? That's how much power this guy had. When his father became Pope Alexander VI in 1471, Cesare, at just age 15, was made into a bishop, and then three years later, a cardinal. One of the biggest scandals still to this day is that Jesus' early appearance is based off the young Borgia. The claim comes from novelist Alexandra Dumas, who apparently heard it from biblical theorists. Apparently Jesus was depicted as a non-European because he was Jewish, but the Borgia Pope, our madman, decided to make a more European-looking Jesus, so he used his illegitimate son Cesare as their new model. In number seven, Cesare and disease. The apple didn't fall far from the tree, especially in the case of Cesare Borgia. Though he wasn't Alexander's favorite son, he was loved dearly ever still. Just like his father, Cesare was prone to indulgence and was quite the ladies' man, but unlucky for many people in Europe at the time, Syphilis was basically everywhere. It was a big deal. It was just a matter of time before the terrible disease caught up with him. Precisely who gave it to him is unknown, but historians believe they know when he got it. In the summer of 1497, at the ripe age of 22, he was sent by his father to Naples to broker a marriage for his sister Lucrezia. Naples was full of brothels and ripe with disease. At the time, it seemed no one could escape the disease, as was the result for Cesare. The disease would show up in sweeping cankers, soul and the skin would be eaten away, sometimes to the bone. This was the case for Cesare, who eventually had to wear a mask to disguise the scars the disease had caused. Number six, in the family. Like many traditional royal families, they like to keep everything tight, keep everything close together, a little too close, some would say. Marriages were arranged, you had to marry your own family member, and on top of that, so many of these dudes in history just cheated and partied while the wives gave birth and tended to house duties. It was bullshit. For Italy's original crime family, they kept everything also a little too close. One of the bigger scandals surrounding them was Lucrezia and Cesare doing the dirty. Her first husband, Giovanni Forza, made these claims first. He actually said Lucrezia was getting it on with her brother and father. Yuck and yuck. Two yucks for the price of one yuck. She was named after the Roman noble woman Lucretia, so this rumor is a pretty ironic one, if true. Most of these rumors came from their enemies, of course, but many have noted that Cesare's intentions to take out Lucretia's husbands had to come from somewhere. This really does sound like Game of Thrones, eh? Wow, I'm on season four, no spoilers. Number five, the death of Juan Borgia. One of the darkest and most mysterious events of the Borgias is the cold case involving Juan Borgia. On June 14th, 1497, Juan Borgia was seen leaving a dinner party at his mother's 
brother's home. After dinner, he sent his companions and his brothers off on a mysterious errand. He had a habit of wandering the streets of Rome in the evening, and his brothers thought, you know, he was just like gonna meet some cool lady. But as I mentioned, he was Alexander's favorite son, so when a day passed, he got worried. On the 16th, a timber merchant came forward and said that on the night of the disappearance, he was waiting for a shipment on the Tiber River. He saw a man with a white horse approach with a body slung over the horse. The four men threw the body into the river and threw rocks at it until it sank. Pope Alexander VI immediately had the river searched and sure enough, they pulled Juan's body from the waves. He was fully clothed with his coin purse still fully attached, ruling out robbery and implying an assassin. Alexander was inconsolable, but the investigation stopped suddenly, implying they discovered who it was and could do nothing about it. The two loudest suspects were his very own brothers, Cesare and Joffrey, each having their own jealousies, which provided strong motive. Number four, a cold death. Cesare Borgia passed away March 12, 1507. He was in the woods near Vienna, and he was actually on his way to suppress a rebellion against his own brother-in-law, King John. Now, it was terrible weather that day, so what happened was Cesare left town thinking his men were following him, but in reality, they actually bailed. They turned around. Yeah, thunderstorms on a horse, they're like, mm, no, pass, obviously. I don't even drive when it's raining. I'm like, mm, nope. Subsequently, he was surrounded by his enemy and was stabbed to death. But the thing is, those men were ordered to capture Cesare alive. But because of the storm and it was dark and the fact that he was all alone, they didn't realize that this was him. His armor was brought back to Cesare's squire, and that's when reality sadly sunk in. Number three, Lucrezia Borgia. Oh boy, where do we start with this one? The life of this woman reads like a damn 15th century opera. Dramatic, over the top, and tragic. Lucrezia's first marriage was a messy one, as she was very much used as a pawn. It was a political match between Giovanni Sforza, whom she married when she was just 13, and he was 26, and we know that didn't end well. Her father chose to annul the marriage when a more lucrative match appeared. He declared that he was impotent in an attempt to preserve his daughter's chastity, and the marriage was annulled. However, at the time, she was six months pregnant with someone's baby. Not Giovanni's though. This scandal Alexander covered up only to reveal the child three years later. Her second husband, Alfonso, she apparently loved dearly before he was mysteriously strangled to death in his sleep. But beyond her love life, Lucrezia was rumored to be an infamous poisoner. It was alleged that she wore a hollow ring that she would fill with poison and use at her leisure. She was even implicated in Juan's death. A lot of rumors, a lot of drama, the scandal seemed never ending with Lucrezia Borgia. Number two, too cool for school. We all know somebody who went to a private school later on in their life and then they started to change a little. You know, maybe they're doing more hair flips. They start saying words like whomst, you know, stuff like that. Well, when Rachel said the scandals with Lucretia are never ending, she was onto something, of course. Young Lucretia was given the best education. Now, today's standards, when you have a family this high up, that's not surprising. But back in those days, young girls were dependent on convents for their education. So nuns would teach them godly obedience, you know, that's the whole point. Lucretia's education was deemed a degenerate one. Oh, you went to Harvard? Wow, what a degenerate. How could you? Hashtag the Lord. Number one, man. What the heck? Banquet of chestnuts. Whatever euphemism popped into your head right now is probably not far off, so just like put it in the comments because I want to see what one's the best. Here at number one, we have the banquet of chestnuts. And no, I'm not talking about chestnuts roasting on an open fire unless you're into that. The banquet of chestnuts was the most famous Halloween party in the history of the world. Basically, what went down was a giant Orgy. October 30th, 1501, a massive banquet was organized in the Papal Palace of all places, which included nobility and senior officials of the Catholic Church. But workers of the night and nude entertainment were invited as well, and for the rest of the night, vows of chastity were out the window. They basically played sexy party games. Even the Pope participated. Although it sounds too fantastic to be true, it was legitimized by a first-hand written account. It was hosted by Pope Alexander VI and his son, Cesare Borgia. Two peas in a pod. The banquet was decadent, full with food and delicacies of irresistible quality, along with 50 of Rome's finest lustful entertainers. This even gave insight to the duplicitous and flawed nature of religious authority of the time, preaching one manner of life to the masses and behaving the complete opposite behind closed doors. Guys, those were just 10 of the many scandals that surround this crazy Game of Thrones family. We could do a part two, kind of, maybe. I don't know. Probably. I think so. Definitely. Let us know in the comments if that's something you'd be into. I don't, I could, we could have fun with it. I'll drop my name in the comments, be like, hi, Rachel, I'd love that. That sounds really And then I'll be like, hey, Taylor, no 
no. And then I'll say, you know what? Thumbs up anyways, because you guys did your best and we're having fun. I'm Taylor McWaters. And I'm Rachel Fisher. And until next time, we'll see you cuties on Bumblebee. Stay sweet.